If you're looking to improve yourself today, look no further than Skillshare, who's today's sponsor. In Skillshare, you'll find a big online learning community and within many masterclasses. For myself, when I first started this YouTube channel, one key objective was personal branding. So if you're also running a business, providing a service, you want to stand out from the crowd, then there are ways that you can improve your personal branding and you can actually look for masterclasses within Skillshare. Or if you're thinking of running a side project, do a YouTube channel as a side project. They actually structure courses that teach you how to lay the foundation correctly to build yourself a side project that will become profitable. Learn more on Skillshare. The first 1,000 to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. Hi guys, welcome back. Now the main thing is, is CDL, City Development, a buy right now? If you look in terms of price to book ratio, you realize it's a screaming buy simply because CDL looks absolutely cheap. But in this tutorial, you understand a bit better why it is looking cheap right now. The reason is sometimes very important also. And 2020 financial was a horrendous year for CDL. Let me pull up this summary that they have actually disclosed in one of their presentations. You realize that firstly, they took a loss for hotels, impairment losses, then decline in hotels again, simply because 2020, COVID-19 struck, and then there was so little traveling. Then last but not least, this portion over here, this massive bomb net loss from sincere property acquisition i'll go through with you in detail in this tutorial if you look in terms of performance wise this loss has translated to a bad share price performance cdl is the green one over here i've plotted them against capital land which is right now in the limelight simply because they are doing some reorganization i have a previous video just in case you haven't seen it i'll leave links below so i combat them against hong kong land and uol and you realize that the green bar CDL is the absolute worst performer. Deservedly or not, let's find out. Now let's move on to the sincere property acquisition. A lot of you were asking about whether it's a good time to buy CDL. But I think understanding this acquisition is fundamental to trying to project their prospects. I'll use this PwC report to help you understand quickly on what went on in Chinese property landscape and especially what impacted sincere property. So inside the report, which I'll leave links below just in case you're curious about it, it's mentioned that in mid-2019, developers were facing a lot of problems, a lot of challenges because banking regulators were warning banks and trust companies who were financing developers' purchases that they'll face tightened security, which means a scrutinizing on loans. Why is there a need to do so? If you look at this chart also mentioned in the report, you realize that for each segment of property developer, the leverage ratio was just climbing and climbing across the years from 2015 all the way to 2019. And when leverage ratio climbs, that means there's risk in the system. And that's actually a proper way to regulate. They're actually trying to control in terms of the leverage ratio. So when it comes to this, how does it impact sincere property? So I put another report from CD Development statement. It's mentioned also that liquidity issues were impacting sincere property. But the main part is the second is the unprecedented structural policy shifts, including the three red line guidelines imposed by Chinese government relating to real estate sector. Sincere property was not spared and its liquidity issues were exacerbated. This means that this developer was in financial distress, liquidity issues. So what exactly happened? Why did CDR move in and what is the timeline of things? I've actually prepared some material for you. They've actually started their investment process in May 2019. That's when the tightening started. They announced their intention to invest 5.5 billion RMB, which is 1.1 billion Singapore dollars, compromising of an equity investment and an extension of interest-bearing loans to acquire 24% effective state in sincere property. So what does this mean? Two tranches, one is equity and one is a bond. So the second portion, the bond, is a four-year interest-bearing amount of 2.75 billion RMB to sincere properties, which can be converted into equity. So this bond, in my interpretation, is probably a convertible bond. So one tranche is convertible bond, one tranche is fully equity. Convertible bond was purchased, but the equity portion, which was supposed to be completed in 2019, was not completed due to a variety of factors, and that D was not consummated. Hence, CDL did not acquire any equity interest in sincere property, but extended the initial tranche as an interest-bearing loan. So very clearly, there are two tranches. The first one, they went in very cautiously as a convertible bond. And then the second one, equity, subjected to terms and conditions. And indeed, they did not move ahead. 
which is kind of good. So with the COVID-19 crisis, CDR has taken the opportunity to renegotiate its investment and they've improved the original investment terms to their advantage. Of course, it's to the disadvantage of sincere property. So as of April 2020, CDR has entered another definitive agreement to acquire 51.01% joint controlling interest. Now they are looking to make a hostile takeover for an initial investment of 4.39 billion renminbi, which is 0.8 billion Sing dollars. And with that acquisition, they've actually taken over control from the founder, Mr. Wu Xu, and one of his previous uh, joint partners, Greenland Holdings. As part of this transaction, a call option will be granted to CDL to purchase an additional 9% effective interest in sincere property for another uh, 0.16 billion Sing dollars. Now this call option is option to buy. Now we're not talking option trading. This is options used in business acquisition. So very smart, which means if they don't like, they can choose to not inject this 0.16 billion. So it seems that this call option can be exercised all the way to July 2022. Now assuming this call option is exercised, the total consideration to acquire 60.01% effective state in sincere property is now at 5.17 billion renminbi, which is 1.04 billion. Sing dollars. As compared to original deal, this seems to be a great deal, correct? And with this valuation, they believe it represents an attractive entry valuation of almost 50% below their NAV. It all seems good. They did a hostile takeover. Luckily, they went in terms of tranches, didn't get burned too badly. Imagine they went all in at the start. Of course, they'll be paying way inflated prices, but they went in tranches and then they renegotiated the deal, so they now buy at a much cheaper price. Of course, with the valuations being such an important point in determining whether this investment is good or not, CD has actually appointed Deloitte to evaluate the investments that they have made and to give proper impairment if indeed that asset is now worth less than it should be. So indeed, in January 2021, the CD has actually mentioned that material impairment losses and this is actually from the report from Deloitte itself. So with that, they've actually taken in certain considerations of losses and factored them, brought them into books to adjust. And from what it seems, the group has effectively impacted 93% of its total investments with this $1.78 billion loss factored in this year. It seems like a kitchen sink approach but they're throwing all the losses, all the impairments this year. Maybe next year, there's no need to take any further hit. And for investors like you, maybe you might be thinking, okay, that's, that's kind of good news. But I'm also a bit curious, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how this 93% works because if what we saw previously, their investment was only one plus billion dollars and how come they take a loss of 1.78 billion? That portion, I still haven't worked out. Uh, if you do know a thing or two, leave them in the comment section so I'll be keen to hear your point of view also. So this is a full summary table of how the things actually went in terms of a timeline. They did the investments, consummated it finally, and then taken suggested losses in terms of the valuations of the various assets. And with that, the last point is that they've actually invested now into Shenzhen, a tech park. And this previously belonged to Sincere Property. So they kind of acquired it off down their subsidiary, bringing it off their books, kind of acquired at a distressed price if I'm not wrong. So again, it seems to be a good point. So three good factors running for it. First, they did not enter at the worst possible time. They actually renegotiated to a slightly better price with COVID-19. Secondly, is that they've actually taken a lot of uh, prudence in terms of the books. They've taken all the hits, it seems, this year. And then thirdly, they've acquired distressed assets from the subsidiary itself. So that all boils down to this. Is Stelia a good investment or not? For myself, I actually am still concerned of things because I can't overlook these various factors and more of which is a lot of resignation of their directors. The first is Mr. Kwek Ling Pei. Now he's uh, the uncle of current CEO and he has actually disagreed with the board on that investment. So he's actually left as of October 2020. Not only him, Mr. Ko Tiam Hock has also resigned as of December 2020. Not only him, a third further director, Ms. Tan Yi Peng, has also left as of January 2021. Three directors have left back to back to back. And what does it mean to me as an investor? That there's some disagreement they can see the things better than what we can see from the outside. Presentations are always nice, but when directors leave, there's disagreement, they are concerned, and I see those as red flags. You know, there's a saying, if there's smoke, there is fire. We can't see now that fire, but we see the smoke already. 
And the second thing I always believe is actions speak louder than words. You can say whatever nice things about the valuation, but if there's infighting, the actions of resignation just, just tells me that there is risk that we may not be fully aware of. So that's my gut feeling. That's why I'm sharing with you. Let's now move on to CDL's other purchase in 2019. They've actually privatized Millennial and Copton. Now, if you've been to Copton Hotels, there's one of which belongs to this brand. Previously, Millennial Copton was part, was an associate company of CDL, but right now they've been fully acquired. And CDL has actually made this uh, offer as of June 2019, and they've actually completed the delisting from the London Exchange of Millennial Copton as of September 2019. Now, in hindsight, this looks to be a terrible deal because COVID 19 prices for hotels are so distressed. Travel is totally obsolete already. So they have kind of almost bought it at the wrong possible time, one year before or a few months before the whole pandemic actually took place. So in that sense, I'm also a bit concerned. If the timing has been better, that would be fantastic. You know, Warren Buffett has this saying, you, you should invest in a company that even a fool can run because someday a fool will. When it comes to property investment, there needs to be a lot of acumen, business acumen. Mr. Quack Ling Beng has moved up to chairman position only and he's actually promoted his son to be the CEO. And that change was, was actually done in 2018. If we factor in the Millennium and Copton purchase in 2019 and then the Sincere Property Investment in 2019, I think the coincidence in timing suggests that the new leadership team is eager to prove itself, make big moves and stuff. And that concerns me a bit. I'm not too sure and not too aligned with the direction. In any case, if we believe that Sincere Property can indeed survive and turn around and become asset to CDL, or Chinese properties are indeed valuable, then the investment to Capital Land might already make sense because they have a lot of exposure there. And there seems to be, without all this mess, there seems there is a lot of work to redo Sincere Properties books. And that's my main concern. That's why I'm not investing in CDL today. So let's compare that to an alternative, which is a company I like a lot, which is also a company that's had a new successor from the family itself, and that company is Hobi. I've seen many fans in this channel asking about Hobi, and Hobi is a company that I've actually owned very long time ago. And Hobi actually has a CEO, Mr. Chua, who in my opinion has very good acumen. That's my assessment of things. For my following of how he's done things, he was very early into Sentosa. I think that was mid 2000s, something like that. You know, Sentosa right now, there's a lot of uh, beautiful projects over there. So Hobi was an early mover there. It showed that he had good foresight. Then after that, when cooling measures takes place, he actually had very little investments in residential property in Singapore. He moved investments to Australia, he moved investments to commercial, he moved investments to UK. Right now, Hobi looks very different. Hobi, if you look at the recent breakdown, you realize that 50% remains in Singapore, but 42% is now in UK. They are bullish on UK properties. What about residential versus commercial? It's very clear, they are bullish on commercial properties, and rightly so. Residential developers, in Singapore at least, have a lot of pressure to churn out properties and make, it, make the sale within the time frame. If not, they'll face stamp duties. So they've moved out a lot from residential, they're going to commercial. And then what you realize is they have built recurring income from commercial properties. This is a key performance driver that they've highlighted before. The first asset that you want to understand if you are interested in hobby is Metropolis. You take a train to Buena Vista, you pass by there, you realize you see Metropolis. And then that is one of the key assets that they have. They drive 46% of total rent rental income from Metropolis itself. They are concurrently building a, a project that is near to it. So there's going to be a further investment in that area. Then the next part is they have actually acquired seven prime London office assets. Over time, they've been building up. Brexit came, they've never waved on it. They continue to acquire assets over there. And right now, portfolio in London is producing 86 million Sing dollars so this is how they've actually moved their business direction. So someone with good acumen knows how to navigate the landscape, look for the world, for opportunities, and bring value to us as investors. Because when we put monies to you as a shareholder, we want to see where you're going to deploy and pick assets to build. So you realize over here that they've grown their net total assets per share consistently. This is a good summary of things, a 10 year financial summary from 2010 all the way to now, the amount has 2.5x in terms of net total assets per share. In terms of dividends, they have grown consistently. They now look more like a REIT than a developer with lumpy performance, simply because a lot of it is in commercial. They have moved that direction. 
but the ability to execute on residential remains. So if there's good opportunities, you can bet that this company is willing to take on residential projects also. The key part is there's also a successor that came to the company, very similar to CDL. Now Mr. Nicholas Chua is the deputy CEO. And I think for Hobi, the tricky question is, are they able to convert or sell out some of their assets in the commercial space into a REIT? Do they have the ability to execute just like how CDL can do, just like how Capitaland can do? If they have the ability to execute, they are able to sell their assets into a REIT and then increase their valuations in the process. So if you have benefited, smash the like button and invite you to press on the subscribe. In the coming weeks ahead, I'll be re-looking at Capitaland's proposal for this restructuring. So if you're keen, subscribe and stay tuned for it. And I'll also be reviewing some of the latest performances from REITs that I've been keen on. And one of them is actually Maple Tree Commercial Trust. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial, inviting you there because I'll be doing a full review, a full update, and that might be an exciting week that you should be in touch with. With that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.